Welcome to Knife Thoughts. This video is going to be an overview of my Barlow's from 2023. So 2023 has been kind of the year of the Barlow for me um, with the growth of the Barlow Bearcat Club, um, several, you know, Barlow's coming from Gradation Cutlery, uh, getting a couple custom Barlow's, a um, couple Barlow's from uh, traditional pocket knives and then from Jack Wolf knives, just a lot of Barlow's, and I love Barlow's. Um, a Barlow is really what got me into, or I guess back into traditional knives, uh, this TC Barlow that I show often. Um, and so I wanted to do a video just kind of going over all of these Barlow's that uh, not necessarily every Barlow that I've gotten or had in 2023, because unfortunately, I wish I had enough money that I could just buy whatever I wanted and um, keep every knife that I got. Uh, but sometimes they have to move along if they're not something that's, you know, necessary for the the collection, the craziness of the collection. So um, this is what I'm basically ending 2023 with. Um, and it's in chronological order. Uh, now, not necessarily all of these were made in 2023, but I got them in 2023. So first off is this Smoky Mountain Knife Works exclusive Boker Barlow. And uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works had these on sale for $100, and a lot of other Boker Barlows are um, German-made, German Solingen-made Boker Barlows are like 200 plus. Um, so I thought it was a great deal, and I decided to pick one up. People in the Barlow Bearcat Club had talked well about them, uh, as well as other people online. And I thought it was nice. Uh, mine came with an off-centered blade. Um, it is no longer off-centered, as you can see, but it came with an off-centered blade, which was a little bit of a disappointment. Not a huge deal to me, uh, but just, you know, it wasn't perfect. I did like it, though. I, I kept it, wanted to keep it, enjoyed it. I think it's a great size. Um, I'm pretty much just only going to show size comparisons to the GEC 15 because they didn't make any 15s here in 2023, but it looks like they might be making 15 Barlows in uh, 2024. Um, but anyway, I ended up fixing the centering myself basically by what is, what's called crimping the blade. Um, so trying to bend it close to the pivot where it's usually a little softer um, so that it doesn't wear the spring as much. Um, and it worked well. As you can see, it's pretty well centered now. And then the really cool thing about this is that I had this engraved by Mike Hughes. So uh, Alex W., um, not sure, you know, I'm not, always never sure if people want their names in uh, videos, so I just go with Alex, I guess. Uh, kind of contacted this Mike Hughes on Instagram and uh, set up this where we can get the Barlow Bearcat Club logo engraved for really inexpensive on uh, bolsters as long as it's, you know, doable. Um, and I think it turns out really nicely. Uh, so he did a great job of that. I'm glad that Alex set it up. And I think it really elevates this a lot. Um, so I really like this, this knife with the Barlow Bearcat Club logo engraved on it. Uh, so the next knife, and first of all, as you can see, I can like just barely um, fit all of them into uh, view here. <laughs> so uh, the, the first and last will be kind of on the edge. But the next one is this Great Eastern Cutlery made, uh, but it's a Remington Cowboy Granddaddy Barlow. And uh, I, I really like this. I think that Remington has such a cool history in traditional pocket knives. Um, and I actually really like that this is a sterling silver shield. Now, shields don't belong on normal size Barlows. Um, I, I want to be clear on that. But on a uh, granddaddy Barlow, a large Barlow like this, I think it's fine. There's enough real estate that it's okay. Um, granddaddy Barlows don't really go with the convention of the bolster being a third of the handle, as you can see. But it is an elongated bolster um, as compared to, you know, a normal knife of this size. Um, so something like a Queen Hunter, you can see the bolster is a good bit longer on the granddaddy Barlow. Um, but I think that this one is really cool. I guess I didn't open the blade on the uh, boker at all. But classic Remington styling, um, beautiful bone, saw cut bone, which you'll see is kind of a theme. Um, 
can see that 2022, but um, I got it in 2023. I think it was the Remington 2022 bullet knife. But when I was looking at my kind of spreadsheet, uh, I got that in like February of 2023. So um, just seems to be how it turned out. The next one is a really special one to me. I've mentioned the Barlow Bearcat Club um, a bunch already, um, but the next one is the Barlow Bearcat Club club knife. So um, started the Barlow Bearcat Club started in, I think, July of 2022, and people seem to really, really enjoy it right off the bat. Uh, grew quite a bit and has grown since then, but um, GEC, Bill, uh, Joe and Joan May reached out to me one day and, um, asked if we were interested in having a club knife. And, uh, obviously I was like, hey, yes, very much so. Um, so it was really cool getting to see that process. Um, hoping to be able to do it in 2024 also. Um, but this was a cool new kind of, not a new pattern, but a new variant of the number 25, Little Barlow. Uh, which you can see has this cap lifter and spear combination blade. Um, and so it is a really cool thing because it is actually very traditional. Now, I got one of the traditional um, sh uh, Schrade wire knives that had this very same blade. I mean, extremely similar. But I gave it to someone in the club, uh, I believe, uh, just along with another knife. So um, I don't have that to show you, but it actually is a traditional blade shape. It's something that has been used before. And you can see, again, like on the Boker, the club logo etched there. Um, I don't have the tube out. I definitely should have gotten the tube out for this. Um, but we got to have a write-up on the back of the tube and our logo and everything. So just really cool and serialized. Um, so some people were able to get their club member number. Not everyone was, just because of how it worked out. Um, but that was really cool. Um, these are beautiful red sawcut bone. Really love how this sawcut turned out. I think it's about as classic as sawcut gets. And then um, club member uh, Tom, who does Levy Heel Woodworking, has made some matching beads for these. Uh, so really cool to have that matching bead. And then member, uh, fellow member Justin, who is uh, Lynch Leather, um, did some matching slips. So really, really cool there. You know, you get to have a kind of a full package. And I think it's, you know, it's of course really special to have a club knife from Gradation Cutlery for the club. Um, you know, we have a traveling number 42. Uh, so it's the 42 serialized one that travels to different members and uh, was just in New York City for, for the holiday here. Um, and I think that it's really cool. It's been really fun seeing how people have responded to it. Uh, it was a really big learning process for me um, in some ways and really super excited and happy to have this one. Uh, so that's a real special one to me. Um, and then another connection to the club here. This is a number 77 Yan Northfield Yankee Barlow. Um, and I uh, started using Renaissance wax and um, definitely was going a little heavy handed with it. <laughs> for a while so this has a lot of wax on it um but the reason i say that this one also has a con connection to the club is as you can see this is from uh 2022 when they did the run of these and in 2022 um i i don't even recall if i was able to get any from dealers but i know that i went to the factory and got um an s model uh and i think a friend who's actually also a member of the barlow bearcat club dan um helped me get another s model and i really wanted to have one of these because i don't have another 77 in my collection um, because of some <laughs> poor planning I had to sell one um, a, a while back a long while back several years ago that I really wished I hadn't um, had to it's just one of those you know stupid situations that come up uh, so I really, really wanted to have one but I just really can't get behind S knives or store knives they're really seconds they're not covered by the warranty and I think on these I just really wanted to have a, a, a non-store model um so in this year in 2023 i stopped by the factory and got um a, a different 25 and uh again alex uh who again set up the the mike hughes engraving 
was kind enough to trade this 77 for a 25 Birlo. I think it was a pretty friendly trade um, towards me on his part. So I really appreciate that. But this is also in sock up bone. Um, what did they call this sock up bone? I have the tube here. So they call this antique yellow sock up bone. And it, it is a traditional antique yellow because those were often very dark, but it's really dark. I mean, it's basically black here, you know, kind of an tan and then a very light yellow uh, where it's hafted to the bolster. And then the saw cut is a very, 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 very light saw cut. You basically can't feel it and can only, only in certain light like that, see the saw cut lines. Um, so it wasn't everybody's favorite uh, cover, I don't think, but I really like it. I like that etch, the Yankee Barlow with the top hat there. Um, and, you know, a very cool knife that I'm really happy to have, again, because it, um, I consider it kind of a gift. I mean, I traded, you know, another knife, but I think it was a, a favorable trade. Moving on to one that's, uh, again, really special to me. Uh, this is the Sean Yaw. Um, so this is a 100% handmade, custom, one-of-a-kind, one-off uh, knife made by Sean Yaw. Um, and so Sean Yaw is a custom maker that even still so far um, doesn't sell his knives. He did actually make one for his yearly giveaway recently that he said he felt was ready to be sold. So that was really ex exciting and interesting to me because his knives are beautiful. I got to check out some and do a video a while back. And then he knew, knew that I love Barlow's and I'd been, you know, discussing with him and such. And eventually he said, hey, you should have a package. And I didn't. So it was very uh, disconcerting. But I realized that when I had done the video on some of his older knives previously, I had been living at my uh, mom's house. Uh, and so I had a different address, but I was able to get this one. And it is just a wonderful knife. So um, I'll show you here uh, the kind of certificate of authenticity. So it's in saw cut bone that he does everything with. Uh, crew wear, it had really nice hardness. Um, Barlow, you can see it was completed in um, the 1st of May and it's number 39. So it's really cool that he serializes his knives and I'll show you that here. Um, but this is a user for me. I have carried this this particular knife probably more than any other one knife uh, this year, even though I got it in, in May. Um, and it's just a beautiful knife. Um, incredible action. Uh, the grind is just unparalleled in my experience. Um, it cuts so, so well and uh, holds holds an edge really well because it's so thin. Um, I love the color of the bone, which actually, you know, Sean asked me, what's your favorite type of handle? And I said, oh, saw cut bone's the most classic, you know. And we were just talking. I didn't, I had no idea that it was like going into a, a, an actual knife. Um, and he said, well, what color? And I said, oh, you know, of course, yellow's classic, red's classic. But I always really like, you know, unique things like light green and, and like teal and uh, stuff like that. And so that's what I got. And it's awesome. Um, I really love it. It's a beautiful, beautiful knife, something I, I'm really happy to have. Um, you know, I feel really lucky to have it because you can't buy these. Um, so that's a really special one. Uh, moving on to this one. So this is the Great Eastern Cutlery number 86 Barlow in Marrowbone. I've got a lot of uh, mineral oil on this one. What did they call this? Uh, just a Barlow, I think. They did the 86-2AB a while back, which you can see here. Um, but these are different. Uh, they don't have the bolster stamp. They have uh, lines and rat tail and a little bit less thin. And they have the spear point instead of a clip point. But you can see if you're not familiar with the 86, it is bigger than the 15. A great size for a Barlow, in my opinion, um, because Barlow's, you know, traditionally are user knives. This one's not going to be a user for me, even though I really wanted to. And that's because these were crazy hard to get. Um, GEC knives, 
for a long time were not that hard to get. They would sit on shelves. I remember the TC that I've shown a couple times just there. Um, I was just able to buy it like, you know, a while after it came out. Um, and then they got kind of hard where you'd need to kind of know when they were dropping, but you should, should pretty much be able to get one. Then they got pretty, pretty hard where you needed to know and you needed to be like ready, set up to, to do it. And I have a video that kind of was in that era on how to buy them. It's like, if you know when they're dropping and have your account set up and stuff, you know, you should have good success. We are really no longer in that era, in my opinion. Um, they are really difficult to get. The drops are, you know, you can miss them even if you have everything set up right uh, a lot of the time. And that's where I'm at. Um, so I actually couldn't get one of these on the drops. I got some of the other 86s, the Charlie Campania SFOs, which I love, the Rider by CC. But I really wanted one of these Barlows, particularly in this marrow bone, which has been called soup bone when it has been used on Charlie's knives. Um, but I wasn't able to get one on drops, so I actually drove to the factory pretty much just to get this. Um, and I'm very, you know, very fortunate and lucky to be able to do that, that I only live about an hour, or an hour and 15 minutes, something between 45 minutes and an hour and 15 minutes, depending on how you drive, I guess, away from the factory. And so I was able to get one. Uh, I believe that this was the last one. It was either the last or the second to last. I'm forgetting which it was, but it was very close. And uh, so I was really happy to get one. It's really nice. I love this marrow bone. Um, it is not the most gnarly of them that I've seen, but it is very nice. A classic Barlow handle um, and great action. Just a beautiful, you know, great example of a Barlow that honestly, you know, I'm a little bit guilty feeling even, you know, getting it out now uh, for not carrying it because I just would really like to, <laughs> um, but I'm probably not going to uh, just because I think it's it's special just in itself. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just a very cool classic knife. Um, moving on to the Lake Champlain Barlow by Traditional Pocket Knives. So this is um, not the latest, now at this point, but one of the latest uh, exclusive knives from Traditional Pocket Knives. I've gotten to know Austin at the GEC Rendezvous, got to see him at Blade Show this year, and he showed me that these were coming out, and I was really excited. Um, I love Barlow's, and uh, I thought that the Ohio River Jacks that he had as his first exclusive uh, slip joint were really, really great, and uh, so I was excited to see these, and especially, because there were these saw cut titanium versions. So this is something, uh, it might have you know been used somewhere before saw cut titanium, but uh, JE made has done some similar things I think, but I haven't had any and I was really excited to see it because I love saw cut bone and uh, saw cut wood, which you'll see a little later. But I'd not really seen saw cut titanium, and I thought that it's you know it was a great job of it. Now this is a large knife. Um, you know, I'll show you again in comparison to an 86. It is a good bit bigger than the 86. So this is like a full size knife. You know, you can do pretty much all of your cutting with this. And there were different versions, but um, this is my favorite of them. I, I gave the other one that, that Austin sent me for review away in the Barlow Bearcat Club. Um, but th this is the one that I wanted to keep because of the saw cut and because of the sheep foot. I really do like sheep foot blades uh, for Barlow's. So beautiful action, um, big burly kind of Barlow, but not quite a granddaddy Barlow in its proportions. So that's a really cool one. The next one, Honestly, I just got because I was ordering other stuff and uh, ended up ordering it. It's really inexpensive, and it is a Rough Rider Mini Barlow. And I think this is called Purple Swirl. I have the box somewhere right here. Um, but I was extremely impressed with this knife. Um, this knife is like $6 at some places. Like I'm not sure if it's still available at Smoky Mountain Knife Works or Chicago Knife Works. But places like that. It is very inexpensive, um, $6, under $10. And this is an incredible knife for that price. I mean, it's just a good knife. Um, there's no gaps, no gaps on the back spring. Um, not really any gaps, maybe a slight little gap there uh, from the bolsters to the covers, but really not too much. And the centering is good. The tip sits nice and deep. Um, the action is really nice. You know, no blade play, uh, nice snap, walk and talk. 
Um, now it's in 440C, which I like. I like having stainless steel. You know, on a Barlow that I'm going to use, I like to have that. Not everybody does. Um, but I was just super impressed with this. And I actually had one of these uh, same mini Barlows in smooth white bone that I really liked. I gave it to someone, I think. Um, so I'm happy to have another one in my collection. It's a great little fifth pocket or watch pocket knife. Um, you can see that it's a good bit smaller than the 15 uh, and smaller even than the last one I'm going to show, which is the GC 14. So it's a very small little Barlow, but um, really impressed with this knife. No blade wrap either, even though it has such good action. No blade wrap that I can feel and sits so deep in the frame. So heck of a knife for uh, $6. Now the next one is another really cool one. Um, and that is the Laroc, Tracy Laroc Custom uh, Barlow Bearcat Club Exclusive. So you can see again that Barlow Bearcat Club logo. Um, this is another thing that Alex from the club worked on. That he, you know, put his time and effort into to make happen. And I really appreciate it because it's such a unique thing for the club. Now, this is not a club knife because a club knife, my thoughts are always that I, I want to make the club knife uh, accessible to everyone, that, that everyone can at least have a chance, um, you know, to get a club knife as long as they get in early enough. Now, with how big the club is now and, and how many knives GEC is making on each pattern, I don't know if I hope that that'll be the case in 2024 if we have a, a GEC club knife. But these, um, we've done two runs of five. And I actually didn't get in on the first run, to be completely honest. Didn't really have <laughs> enough my, knife money for it at the time. Uh, but I got in on the second run and I was really glad I did because it's just a really cool thing to have... The logo on a beautiful custom knife like this. Um, this is Desert Ironwood and uh, it's pretty unique, really nice. Um, Tracy Laroc has a unique style in his blades that have a Hamon. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but you can see the, the differential heat treat there. I love that. Just looks super cool and it's a really nice knife. It's not perfect. Um, I would say that it's not necessarily at the same level as the Sean Yaw. Um, but it's a beautiful knife. Um, that one thing, if you can see the the shininess of the kick there, I actually dropped the kick on this the first day that I got it. Uh, so, you know, a little bit crazy, I guess, for a custom knife, but I knew that I was going to use it. This knife is not one that I got to just like sit in my collection and collect dust and, you know, think that I might sell later or something. This is one that I wanted to use and have been using, uh, and I wanted it to be to sit deep enough that I felt comfortable with it. And it does now. And you know, the spring does sit a little low, but frankly, I think that it sat a little bit low before I dropped the kick. So um, maybe that made it sit slightly more low, or just a little bit lower. I don't think it did much though. Uh, so I'm happy that I dropped the kick and happy with this knife. Um, you know, one of the more expensive knives that I've bought, not the most expensive, but one of the more, and uh, definitely, a beautiful knife that's kind of like an heirloom quality, heirloom type thing, um, but also a great user for me. So that's another really cool one that I am happy to have. The next one here um, is one that um, maybe some people wouldn't consider to be a Barlow, but I have decided that I do. And that is the Jack Wolf Knives After Hours Jack. So this is the second um, locking one hand opening knife from Jack Wolf Knives. Um, you can Front flipper this, super smooth. I've actually taken this apart a couple times. You can middle finger flick and you can thumb roll it. Um, and I love these. I think that Ben who uh, does Jack Wolf knives does an incredible job of translating these traditional patterns into um, modern knives. And these are really modern. You can see it has a pocket clip, screws. It's an inset frame lock on this version. Um, Someone on my video on this knife said that it, the this, the coffin handled Barlow and the Midnight Jack, which is the slip joint version from earlier, uh, were inspired by a Bill Rupel custom that Ben had said that. Um, I'm sure he told me that at some point and I just forgot. But I think that these are really cool. Basically it makes it so I can carry a Barlow and a Barlow um, because I normally carry a, carry a modern knife and a traditional knife. And so that's really cool. I've carried this and the Rough Rider together. 
very big <laughs> price difference of $350 knife and a $6 knife, but um, makes for a cool combination because they're both purple. So uh, I really like this one, really well done. Um, and uh, just a really cool Barlow to have and carry. And then the last one here, hopefully I don't knock these together too much, is this GEC number 14, so the scaled down version of the 15, Lick Creek Barlow. So this is a TC. TC is, is owned by GEC. It's not just for Charlie Campania. Um, it's Titty Ute Cutlery. And, uh, and this is the Lick Creek version. So I did do a video on all of the 14s that I got from this run recently, but this is the one that's really my favorite of them um, because it is from Lyle. Uh, Lyle has always been really friendly with me, um, talked with me, told me, you know, kind of the, uh, shared his knowledge at the GEC rendezvous and was kind enough um, to let me get one of these. And I think it's really cool with this wormy chestnut, uh, wormy saw cut chestnut. Um, which is, I think, really cool and an, and an upgrade kind of over the previous um, previous uses that he's done of this wormy saw cut. Uh, so a really cool little knife. Uh, again, probably not a user just because, um, you know, I have a 14 that I already carry and use, and which was actually a gift from Rick of the Barlow Bearcat Club. Uh, and it's just such a unique thing, um, having that wormy chestnut being, you know, very low numbers. I think maybe 27 of these made. Um, it's really cool and one that I'm really happy to have in my collection as a collection piece. So those are my Barlows of 2023. Uh, long video here. It's going to be under half an hour, thankfully, but still definitely a long video. Uh, so if you have enjoyed this video, I'm guessing you would like to be in the Barlow Bearcat Club. Um, we uh, have been having a great time. You can apply at the link in the description. Um, you can learn more there and apply. Uh, new kind of way of, of becoming a member here in 2024, so keep an eye out uh, for the newsletter. And um, if you enjoy this type of video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the bell and select all. Uh, check out my website, knifethoughts.com, where I post articles on knives like this and knife-related topics. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.